hello everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to do something important which might be helpful for any experimentalist out there those who are doing flow cytometry analysis so we are going to deal with the facts data set in our programming language and this will be very helpful for any analyst uh, doing uh, high throughput fr uh, fr flow cytometry analysis so evaluating the flow cytometry data using R might be you know intimidating initially but I strongly encourage uh, its usage and adoption for individuals conducting medium to high throughput uh, facts based experiments even when examining a limited number of markers Conventional or the commercial flow analysis software such as Flojo or Fax Express struggles when dealing with extensive sample data sets. It operates slowly, is susceptible to crashes, and exporting large plots can be very difficult or cumbersome. So in contrast, these R based flow cytometry analysis excels in addressing these challenges effectively and there are various R packages which are available publicly for the analysis of the flow cytometry data offering a versatile solutions for researchers especially to the experimentalists so we'll be dealing with many more uh, R packages we are going to install different types of R packages and then we can analyze the data by loading a sample data set I have 10 data sets uh, in my sample so we can load all those samples together and uh, uh, we can analyze uh, those samples so what are the requirements the requirements are uh, for you to analyze the data sets in R you need these packages such as Flowcore, Flow Workspace, Cyto ML, GG Cyto Flow AI, Flow Stats, and eventually you can also use Cyto R Suit, which is uh, which which will help you to analyze the, your data sets very uh, interactively. But we'll be dealing with uh, uh, all the options out here, and then we can analyze our data sets. And what are the steps? So first, you need to collect all your FCS files from your machine, and then we can perform. Uh, we can compensate it and we can transfer the data sets then we go for the quality control then eventually we go for the gating and some uh, visualization uh, if you use uh, the Cyto R suit then you can choose your gating manually by uh, you know selecting specific region um, but also you can do it automatically as well so we'll be delving into that shortly so yeah see you in a bit so let's begin so this analysis is intended uh, those who do not have access to flojo or fax express uh, those kind of commercial softwares so this is purely in r i mean this is my r studio so you can analyze flow cytometry data in our platform let's begin by creating uh, a new project i have already created so what you can do is uh, you can uh, go here and uh, here you can type in new project and in the um, okay if i cancel it then it will be uh, gone so uh, anyway, uh, you look into my previous uh, tutorial on R, how to create a new project and uh, how you can uh, define your project using Quarto documentation that you also you can find in my previous video. So yeah, basically you go here and create a new project and there you have to input the title, uh, the author and uh, yeah, these are the uh, advanced commands that you can use if you have very large files uh, for instance uh, the fax files are really huge uh, if you can see here my fax data you can see uh, my data uh, 
the file size is around 200 megabytes 96 143 megabytes you know it's quite large so if you have hundreds of files then it will be more than um, you know two gigabytes or four gigabytes of data so yeah let's uh, start so this is basic introduction you can insert images and also you can write uh, different types of contents in order to help you to understand what you are doing uh, inside um, our studio or for your analysis so the packages uh, that I'm using uh, in this tutorial and which I highly recommend are Flowcore, Flowstats, Flow AI, Cyto ML, Open Cyto, Flow Workspace and GG Cyto. Uh, these are the packages that you need to install and also you can visit this link FCS Express downloads uh, so that you can understand what you are doing like for instance if you compensate uh, if you transform your data how to set up the gate and what are the statistics involved that also you can uh, refer to the FCS Express manual and you can find all the information uh, over there Cyto R suit is another package in R where you can manually manipulate the data by providing uh, different types of information to uh, which are your uh, control files, which are your activation files, which are compensation files. And also you can set your uh, gating um, manually uh, inside uh, this package. So this package is really helpful, but I'm not go not going to uh, uh, analyze by using Cyto R suit, but rather I will uh, uh, use Flowcore, Flowstats, Flow AI, uh, and Cyto ML, GG Cyto, especially for the visualization purpose. And uh, I'm going to do the analysis. So yeah, so let's start with installing the basic packages. So. These are the CRAN packages that you get from the R, uh, like Tidyverse, NITAR, uh, ggplot2, Remorse, BIOC Manager, Dev Tools, and Cable Extra. You can also install Grid Extra. Uh, that is also uh, the same package. So actually, I have done all the analysis because it takes a lot more time. I don't want to waste uh, by analyzing one by one. So I have installed everything. I have analyzed it, and I have created um, HTML file uh, for you guys to uh, refer to th this particular tutorial okay so you install the packages first uh, uh, these are uh, some of the outputs that you get and then you go to the bioconductor and you install uh, the, the these bioconductor packages such as flowcore uh, workspace open cyto flow ai gg cyto and cyto ml and if you want to analyze your data by using Cyto Explorer uh, R data, uh, which I think I'm going to cover in my next tutorial. So you can install that as well. Okay, so this is the command that you um, install all the packages from Bioconductor. Okay, the next thing that you want to do is load all your packages and the basic command is library and you define your library once you install all the packages. So uh, this is the basic command uh, that you load all the packages at once. Okay. And this particular chunk is for uh, large files. Uh, since uh, FCS files, they are really huge files. So you want to read those files in chunks rather than reading the whole data sets. If you have six gigabytes or four gigabytes of data, then uh, loading at once is very difficult uh, the r cannot handle it uh, there will be memory issues so i think this one this particular chunk of command is really helpful uh, in order to analyze your data effectively without any memory errors okay the next thing that you want to do is sometimes uh, let me show you sometimes i get the files um, let me show you yeah, this one for instance. You can see that these files, uh, these are named uh, without uh, any underscores. I mean, there, there are some spaces also. Okay, of course, these are specimen files, but uh, sometimes you get all these files uh, without any underscores and there are spaces in it. So in order to avoid that, 
avoid the spaces uh, in your analysis so you can format your FCS data and this is the particular bash command uh, so this is a for loop where you provide um, you know in, in place of spaces you provide the underscore so once you do this uh, your data uh, will be formatted um, according to uh, let me show you yeah and it will be easy for you because these underscores have been inserted by using this bash command so that your files uh, would be um, you know you can analyze it uh, effectively without any uh, issues with the spaces okay so if you get your files with underscores and with hyphen also that's fine but if you don't get it then uh, this is the command Okay, then uh, what you can do is you can read single files also. Uh, for instance, uh, if I uncomment it, uh, the command will be the fax data and you load your fax data uh, into it. So let me just, yeah, you can see that my file has been loaded and the, the command to load uh, inside the R environment using the flow core package is read.fcs. I mean, this is the function that you need to load your file. And uh, you can just execute this and you can see that your file uh, will be uh, loaded. Okay, uh, let me just, inst uh, I mean, uh, load all the packages. Yeah. Then I think it will work, yes. So now, uh, since I have loaded all the packages, now if you execute this particular command, you see uh, the read.fcs is the function from the flow core package. So this will be loaded. And you can um, <coughs> analyze all the names in the FCS files, uh, uh, even the expressions or the keywords, the metadata, etc., by using this uh, particular command. So names, you can see from the names, you have uh, FSCA, FSCH, SSC, side scatter, forward scatter, and these are some of the markers. I also described all the abbreviations, what they really mean, uh, so that you can also refer to that documentation. Uh, these are the expression values that you can get uh, from this particular single file. And you can see these are the expression values, and the command is EXPRS and you get all the uh, expression values from here okay and if you want to uh, analyze what is the median value of all your expression um, values you can uh, use this command to find out the median values and these are the median values as you can see per sample okay i mean uh, for your sample that you have loaded and this is the command to extract the keywords. You can see that what type of keywords has been used. And if you can open the FCS file also by using text editor, you find uh, the similar information. But in R, it's m much more easy so that you write one command keyword, uh, uh, your FCS file, and that's it. You get uh, all your metadata over here. Okay, so this is how you can uh, analyze a single file. If you want to read the whole data set, again, this uh, read.flowset command is really helpful. This will uh, load all the files. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I have five different uh, files, FCS files, so you can load all the files at once. Um, truncate max range dot names is equal to true. That means uh, you can um, print out all the uh, values inside the files uh, by using this otherwise if you keep it false then only half of the files will be displayed otherwise um, if you set it for true then all the values will be displayed so if you execute this command you will see that your uh, so I, I give fs as flow set uh, that means all the uh, files um, in your data folder will be loaded to this particular variable which is fs that is the flow set okay now it's loaded and if you uh, want to analyze a single uh, data set you can see that it will tell you that a flow set 
with one experiment has been loaded. If you click on FS, then you can see that a flow set with five experiments, you can see I have five different files, so five experiments have been loaded. If you want to analyze the column names, then it can tell you what type of column names do you have. So it starts from forward scatter uh, to all the markers, side scatter, time, and uh, all types of different markers are there. Okay. And if you want to extract the metadata uh, from this, there is a function called pdata uh, that you can execute. So for instance, if I execute this, uh, it will tell you what type of um, files are there, what or which FCS files have been loaded over here. And uh, for instance, uh, if you want to extract, if you want to specify this with a naming scheme, for instance, here you can see that this pattern uh, consists of different types of dates, right? So what I can do is I can extract these dates and put it in a separate column called uh, well or maybe date, you know, whatever uh, you wish that you can um, uh, insert the name. For instance, I put well over here and this is the expression or the expression to extract uh, these dates and put it in a separate column. So if you uh, execute this particular command, uh, you will see that, uh, and then uh, this particular command, you will see that a new column has been created with well, and you can see that dates have been um, uh, inserted into the well column, so that I can specify the sample name uh, with these uh, particular dates. And uh, while plotting also, it would be helpful so that you recognize all your samples. Uh, if you, if you, uh, you know, specify this, then this might be a little bit too much for the plot. So that's why uh, you can uh, separate, uh, for instance, in my case, it's the date, but you can do uh, from different uh, uh, markers or different wells or whatever you like. I mean, how, how do you want to, uh, specify the naming of the samples it depends on you okay and if you analyze the column names uh, so you find yeah these are the column names actually and this is uh, a very nice command that is the parameters data so if you click this one for the first uh, experiment you can see that you have uh, 33 different uh, uh, parameters uh, so if you click this particular uh, thing over here you, it will open a new window and you can see that you have 33 different parameters as you can see including the time and your forward scatter and side scatter values and these are your markers and you can see in the description that these particular markers are CD24, IGD, CD56, CD38 blah blah you know all these uh, markers are there and this is the time so whatever the colored markers are, those are having some description, but with the forward scatter and the side scatter, you only, and for the time, you don't have any description over here. Okay. That's normal. Right, so this is how you extract the metadata from your samples. And the abbreviations used as, uh, as I mentioned, forward scatter, uh, H means height and A means area, uh, similar to the um, side scatter also. And you have FITC, the, that is fluorescein isothiocyanate, and this is a fluorescent dye. And also you have all different types of fluorescent dyes uh, I have written. Uh, for instance, BV is a brilliant violet. And the time, this usually refers to the time parameter, indicating the duration of the cell's passage through the laser beam which can be useful for identifying doublets or aggregates. Okay, so be uh, careful with all these parameters. If you want to change the namings also, you have the option to change the names. Uh, for instance, uh, if you, so I commented it out because I don't want to change it, but if you look into this, so what you have to do is you have to extract the column names and for instance, if you uh, are looking for this uh, BB660PA, uh, you can refer from here. Okay, let me execute this command. And 
so it's uh, bb660 pa that is cd56 so what you can do is <coughs> you can go down and you can uh, change it to uh, cd56 okay i think this oh this is uh, changing because i changed the font so that's why it is bit uh, uh, overlapping uh, for the cursor so it doesn't matter so you can change the namings like this you know the column names and you can change uh, the naming patterns uh, from here if you wish otherwise leave it like this you can see fsca is fsc and if i want to change this particular marker to uh, this particular name then you can change the namings i mean it depends on you whether you want to change or not otherwise leave it um, for now okay the next thing the most important thing is uh, the uh, you know compensate your sample manually I mean you can do it automatically also uh, there is a command to do or automatic uh, compensation but I would recommend to do it manually in order to understand what are your uh, fluorescent dyes that you have used what are your controls what are your activation samples uh, in that case, uh, you can use a um, particular sample, we, uh, for instance, a control sample that you have. You can compensate your uh, samples manually to the other samples. Okay, so basically what we do is we create a spillover spreading matrix. I think most of you, those who are using flow cytometry, uh, I mean the Fax Express or Flojo, uh, they have this uh, particular function uh, which you can do it manually and automatically as well uh, in R also you can do the same <coughs> by creating a spillover spreading matrix okay and I have written all the description over here so that you you can read um, so I'm taking the first sample as the control sample and on the basis of that I am compensating all the samples okay so the command is spill over FS uh, the first sample so if you click here you can see that uh, your samples have been I mean it will create a spillover matrix and then uh, by using this command compensate this is the function so compensate commands then you can compensate all your samples it will take some time based on your uh, based uh, uh, on how many samples that you have but uh, yeah it will be done quickly and then if you check the parameters data uh, you will see your maximum range minimum range uh, and the description and your naming with all the uh, parameters like this okay so this is how you compensate your samples here I am taking the specimen sample so don't bother about that if you have the real a data from the flow cytometry then you can do much more better the next thing that you perform is the quality check this particular thing will take a lot of time based on your samples since I have samples you know almost uh, uh, maybe uh, one gigabyte or something it takes a lot of time uh, probably for yesterday I was doing 10 samples so it took almost half an hour uh, to do the control and the quality check and the command to uh, check the quality of the samples is flow auto QC it will automatically do the QC for you and it will produce a QC folder like this results QC uh, per sample it will create a QC uh, the quality control files and also an HTML file so you can view it in your browser for instance uh, this one is called flow AI report so this is uh, the flow uh, the quality check um, is the package from flow AI so this will generate a report uh, for you and you can see quality control analysis the summary the how many anomalies were there uh, how, uh, how many anomalies were uh, uh, detected number of high quality events uh, flow rate check okay so signal acquisition check etc so you can find all the information over here with all the parameters you can see from here to here um, all the parameters have been listed here and you can see what type of change points detected in the channel shifts with the dynamic range check negative outliers upper margin events 
and uh, anomalies also okay so this is a very nice uh, report from here um, for uh, for each and every sample you can uh, view all this uh, uh, quality report uh, from um, by using the HTML file generated over here right so yeah so this will create a folder called the results uh, QC and also it will give you a mini dot text I think yeah you can see how many anomalies detected here the text for the meta metadata file for instance uh, for quality check okay so this is the file that you look into right I'm not going to run this because it will take a lot more time the next important step is the transformation transforming the flow cytometric data after the compensation is a uh, is a very important you know step in the analysis process so what you want to do is you want to use this function called estimate logical so this will compensate uh, this will transform your samples uh, based on the parameters that you provided uh, for instance 5 to 32 means uh, my samples uh, if you look into here if I click this and you can see I want to transform all the samples from parameter 5 until 32 not the time okay all these markers and maybe these are my control samples so these are the dice that I want to transform uh, these samples so I input parameter number 5 to uh, 32 here 32 so as you can see here I have input this 32 so if I press this so it will generate a transformed matrix okay now uh, if you uh, I, I, I give a variable name such as FS comp clean uh, FS uh, I mean the flow set compensate clean transformation okay and then I transform all the values if you look into the first uh, experiment or the, your first sample it will take some time to transform all the values but it will be done quicker I mean uh, uh, you know uh, at first I mentioned that R can handle large number of files uh, uh, in, in Flojo if you or maybe in Fax Express if you load many samples like 100 or 200 samples then it might break sometimes it will cause problem but in R it can be done effectively okay now it's done so if you look into the first experiment you see the values over here you have all the 33 parameters and you can see dynamic range your minimum range your maximum range etc right and you can look into the parameters uh, data as well here right okay so this is how you transform all the values then you visualize the results using the GG Cyto package. This is one of the most important package for flow cytometry data analysis. And the function that it uses is autoplot. You don't have to use ggplot2 or maybe any other uh, package uh, to plot the data. Autoplot can handle everything by its own. So it's, it's just the basic command autoplot and then you uh, insert your sample or your experiments and that's it it can uh, produce very nice plots so if I click on this auto plot you can see that a very nice plot will be generated yeah it will take some time and you can see that this is before uh, the transformation uh, I think yes this is before the transformation so that's why I mentioned that transformation is why why transformation is necessary uh, you can see it from here so this is before the transformation and you can see this one plot after the transformation you can find the plots much more informative uh, in respect to uh, the the file which is not transformed yeah look at this plot and look at the previous plot it's it's really different and you can find much more 
uh, information uh, from this particular plot. Okay, so that's why transformation is really necessary, right? And then uh, if you want to plot your forward scatter with the side scatter, uh, you can just use autoplot function again. Your plot has been characterized by using the uh, well information, that is the date that I have, uh, that I have previously generated, a column called um, well in that date. So you have your specimens uh, or the experiments well characterized so that you can identify all your samples. You know? Then uh, you have uh, a visualization with other markers. If you want to visualize with other markers also like forward scatter and this is one type of marker, then you can find you know, uh, different plots in order to analyze. I mean, these are only specimen samples, so don't bother about the plots. It might be correct or it might be wrong. And then uh, against time also, you can uh, plot uh, these plots, okay? The next important thing is the gating set. Now we, uh, I, I gave the explanation over here why gating in flow cytometry is really important in order to identify the cell population, the singlets, the doublets, and the live cell, dead cell, you know, you do the analysis in flow cytometry, right? So you in, in, the, in the gating set, it is very important that you transform your data and insert that particular transformed object into the gating set, okay? So this is the command to execute, uh, for instance, GS and your gating set, gating set is the command and then uh, your transformed object over here. It will take some time based on your samples, but it will be done um, quickly if, you're if you have less samples. Okay, you can uh, read all the documentations over here. I don't want to go uh, into uh, explaining why it is important. Uh, so I have written it over here very nicely so that you can understand all those things. I just want to quickly show you the course that I used to analyze all the flow cytometry data. Okay, next you want to uh, define the cell gating. So the command to define the cell gating is gs pop get data. This is the new command. If you follow previous tutorials, like the old commands, then uh, it will be only get data and then your um you know matrix so i don't recommend or, or your gating set so i think this command has been changed recently so this is the new command that you can uh, define your cell gate okay so if you click this you can see you have defined your uh, gating cell gating and i want to define uh, this particular cell gating uh, into a variable called my gate. So then this is the command to uh, insert uh, gating into your gating set. Okay, so I name it as my gate and uh, the parent is the root and uh, I, I gave it a name called my gate. Okay, then uh, you have this particular function called GS pop add. So this will add uh, the gate into uh, into the samples and then you recompute it and you can see that it it will take some time uh, to apply the gating and you can see it over here I have a, a for loop plot for uh, all the samples uh, for forward scatter and side scatter you can see and then you can print out all the gates over here so it will take some time and it is using flow cluster. I think this is from uh, one of the packages that we installed from Bioconductor. And you can g uh, get all the information from here. Uh, why the cell population, why you are doing for, um, you know, singlets. Okay. All these things that you get uh, all the information from here. I mean, uh, you are using commercial software, so you know basically, sometimes it is very difficult to understand uh, what these commercial softwares they do actually. It's kind of a black box. Even though they have very nice manual, nobody bothers to read it. So uh, maybe it's better to try it once in R 
and then go for uh, commercial softwares in order to do the analysis so that you understand what you are doing yeah also uh, i want to show you that uh, this is uh, my r repository uh, sorry uh, github repository you can refer here i will insert all the codes over here so that you can refer from here and also the html file that i have generated from quarto document and also all the codes uh, in here i don't want to upload the files because the files are too large so you can analyze from your files but i will insert uh, i will upload all the codes over here and also the explanation is inside the code so i don't want to write it over here but uh, i i will upload all the codes that has been generated and also the qc files also but not the bigger files but also uh, these uh, smaller html files i can upload yeah it's done okay ah here i mentioned recompute so that's why it applies the gate and then uh, it added uh, this particular name my gate into the samples and then recompute so that's why twice it has been you know executed okay now if you click here you can find uh, how the plots are being generated and how the plot will look like for instance if you go here yeah this is one plot this is another plot here this is another one this is another one yeah you can see okay and then uh, you have to input the single uh, the singlet get okay uh, it's the same uh, you uh, refer all the information that you have defined over here that is the my gate uh, from here here or here the my gate my gate uh, name you have to insert it over here you have to use the getting set and also the same command from here okay so now you define the singlet gate. yeah the, you have to define your singlet gate because this one already i have defined over here okay so yeah it's done next add the singlets yeah and then a recompute done and then auto plot yeah you can see th this is uh, my auto plot diagram here and you can see that all the samples uh, the singlets has been defined over here this may not be accurate i don't uh, doubt that because these are specimen samples and this is only for the tutorial purpose so don't bother about that but if you have real experimental samples then that would be really nice to look into that okay and you define your samples from here the plotting you see how it has been i mean this is auto uh, automatic thing so maybe you can go for the manual gating also that is also another sad thing that you can define your gating by using different uh, as i mentioned cyto or should you can define your gating but this is automatic one so it might predict accurately or precisely or may not predict you know accurate enough so you can go for um, you know uh, manual gating also the quad gate is optional if you want to define your quadrant then also you can define by using this particular code and uh, then you perform uh, and then you go for the statistics part so gs pop set stats uh, this is the command that generally we use to get all the statistical uh, values okay so i just execute this command for your getting set and you can see that all your counts has been uh, written over here with all the uh, population that is your root your my gate you know your my gate and single the my gate is the thing that we defined uh, previously and you have the root samples and you can define uh, your singlets as well okay 
so yeah the next thing is your migrate and percent that you want to get here you can see your percentage as well okay and then uh, you have your yeah with the population you can see uh, along with the populations you have your gate your channels and you you get to do all the statistics uh, I think based on your samples so this is just an example and then the next thing is you define a function and then uh, get the quantiles a value like I think 75% quantiles uh, it will take some time in order to generate and all the information uh, that you need is over here why I'm doing that and uh, what is the importance of this uh, and also statistics is really uh, important uh, parameter in order to understand what are the values really mean for instance if you go here for MFO MFI is a measure of the average fluorescent intensity of a cell population yeah so uh, or the mean fluorescent intensity MFI I think this is the most important parameter in flow cytometry analysis right and pop quantiles calculates the 75th percentile as I mentioned or any other specified quantile for each channel okay you can read in the documentation and you can see from here I think yeah so all these values will be generate statistical parameters okay now you have another function where you can define your mean values so this is pop mean this is quantiles this is the mean values and also the next thing yeah now you can see yeah you have all your mean values okay also the next thing is uh, get the population statistics for the downstream analysis uh, which is uh, the GS pop get count with a meta function this function you can use it uh, by using uh, a variable called PS and then you define your count and parent count and this is the function and you can generate a table actually you can see here a table with all the information all your samples uh, the well information or the naming scheme that you have defined what is the population what are the counts what is the parent count and percent uh, of the parent okay so like this uh, you can uh, perform uh, your flow cytometry data analysis in R and this code will be publicly available so don't worry you can uh, use this code for your analysis purpose and if you want to save the whole session of the R file then you can use this command save image and your R data file and uh, you can you can also take a snapshot of your R environment that all the packages have been loaded so that when you move to other laptops or any other if you want to send it to your colleagues or professors then they can utilize the same R environment and can install all the packages that you have used and reproduce your data okay so if you click on a render over here if you are using quarto document it will generate a HTML file like this it will take some time to generate the HTML file so now you can see that HTML file has been generated here are the packages and uh, the outputs also I mentioned here and uh, these are the codes okay and these are the plots also I have given with all the explanation so that you can refer to the documentation itself you can see okay and then you can use it for your own analysis I have two different um, HTML file so one is this one one is the previous one as I have shown and here you can see if you click on show all code uh, view source here you get all the codes like this you know you can directly copy paste from here or 
if you want to read it like this and you can just unfold and read um, uh, also look into the execution of the packages for instance if you go here yeah this is the code and you can see flow set with one experiment because this is the parameter i have used and then fs flow set with five experiments okay so you can actually look into the code and then look into the outputs as well so i will upload this to this particular github channel i will put the link in the description and i think you can refer that okay that's it for now uh, maybe i can uh, uh, later on uh, and yeah uh, also forgot to mention that this is a cyto explorer r package in which you can actually manually get and define uh, this type of cool plots but uh, the important thing is you need to have two sets of data which is compensation samples and your activation samples this is really important that you categorize your samples into two categories then only this will work otherwise no otherwise i think you can go for the other code that i have shown it's a very cool package i think i will cover it in my next uh, tutorial uh, with the example data sets from here only so that you can understand but uh, for now if you want to refer then you can refer to cyto explorer R package okay so that's it for now thank you very much and hope to see you in the next tutorial please subscribe to my channel if you like it thank you very much